Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, to everybody out there who's watching, if you get anything out of this video, I would appreciate it if you would show your support by clicking that thumbs up button. And then of course, if you would like to take it a step further and offer some financial support to the channel, there are links in the description below for how you can do that. And just know that any purchase you make is going to help support this channel so that I can continue to make uh, guitar building videos as well as videos where I review the tools that we use to build guitars. And at the very least, what you can also do to help support me financially is to click that uh, thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. So what I'm going to be talking about in today's video is I'm going to answer a question from a viewer who wanted to know, is it faster to build a guitar with a CNC machine than it is to use traditional techniques? And I, th I think this is kind of a provocative question because when you look at all the steps that are involved, whether you're using traditional methods and techniques or a CNC machine, it seems like it would pretty much be about the same amount of time. But the short answer is yes, it is way faster to make a guitar with a CNC machine than it is to use traditional techniques. But obviously there's a lot more to the story and that's what I want to try to explain. And the reason I want to explain this is because I know a lot of you who are considering CNC uh, technology for your workshop or have actually made the plunge and purchased the equipment are struggling with the learning curve. Because let's face it, at this stage, there's still a fairly steep learning curve when it comes to using a CNC machine to build guitars. The one bit of helpful advice that I can give you is to stick with it because once you get past that learning curve, it speeds up dramatically. I know that for some of you, the idea of building guitars really fast isn't necessarily appealing and it's not the reason why you're doing it. It's more of a hobby pursuit, uh, something you want to do as a fun project and you're not necessarily interested in saving a lot of time and speeding up the process. You're not looking for manufacturing-like efficiencies. Uh, but there are others of you watching who are aspiring to be the next PRS or Ibanez and you want to to speed up your process as quickly as possible. And using CNC technology will definitely allow that. However, in the beginning, it may not seem that way. Uh, now, when I'm talking about traditional techniques, I'm talking about the use of hand tools such as a hand plane, spoke shaves, chisels, uh, files, those sort of tools, as well as power or electric assisted tools like a drill press, a band saw, a joiner, a planer, a table saw, all those tools, tools that are non-digital, they're analog. And of course with CNC, we're talking about the computer, the software, and the CNC machine itself. Uh, I think there are a lot of folks who, when they get into CNC or are exploring the use of CNC, their hope is that they can use a CNC machine to do everything that some of those uh, traditional tools are doing. And while that's true in many cases, I find that it's a blend of the two that works the best. And it's knowing when to use CNC and when to use the traditional tools that can really uh, en enhance the efficiency of the work that you're doing. But in general, the processes of using CNC, once you have uh, flattened out that learning curve, it's dramatically faster. In the past when I was building guitars, because I've been building guitars going all the way back to the early 2000s, uh, over 20 years now. And in the beginning I was using um, a very limited uh, supply of, of tools that I had available to me. And I gradually acquired more tools over the years until I had a pretty fully equipped shop. But even once I had a fully equipped shop, using the traditional methods and techniques, it could take me hours and hours to make a neck or to make a body. 
And with CNC, I've managed to shorten that time frame down dramatically. Now, in the beginning, when I first started using CNC, I kind of struggled trying to understand the process of designing for CNC. And when I look at CNC technology, it's important to understand I don't have any formal training when it comes to using CNC. I didn't go to any schools. I didn't uh, take any classes or anything like that. I'm completely self-taught. So some of the terminology that I use may not be what those of you who have taken classes uh, would be used to hearing. Um, but when it comes to CNC, I look at it as a two-phase process. The first phase is the front end. The second phase is the back end. On the front end, that's where you're doing all your design work. You're using CAD software. CAD is CAD, Computer Aided Design. And that's where you're using your computer to design the parts that you're going to make on your CNC machine. Then, of course, you have the second part of that front end, which is the CAM process. CAM is CAM, Computer Aided Manufacturing. That's where you're taking the part that you designed in CAD and you're assigning a tool path. And from that tool path, you're writing the G code or the software is writing the G code. Once you're done with that, you're transitioning from the front end to the back end. And the back end is where you're taking your blank, clamping it down to the wasteboard, and then you're feeding that G code to the CNC machine. And the CNC machine is then carving the part that you designed. So there's a front end and a back end. A lot of folks, when they see all this or hear about all this, they assume that all of this work is going to take a tremendous amount of time. In the beginning, yes, it does because of that learning curve. You'll find that designing in CAD software can be uh, challenging. However, it is getting better. And with the recent uh, influence of artificial intelligence, it's getting even faster. And it's getting to the point where uh, you're going to be able to design parts very, very quickly using that, that technology. But you have to be willing to learn how to use it. Uh, in the beginning, when I was first using that technology, as I said, it would take me hours and hours just to create the model that I would need for a guitar body or a guitar neck. Nowadays, I can create a neck from, I can start out with a blank document, a brand new document, and I can create a neck that's ready for CAM in about 30 to 45 minutes. And about the same thing for a body. So I'm able to do that much, much quicker. Now, when you think about that time that's necessary to do that, compare that to the time it takes to create a template for making the guitar body and the guitar neck using traditional methods. You have to take uh, a board, you know, like a half inch or three quarter inch thick board or a piece of, um, uh, acrylic plastic and then you have to cut out the shape and do all that work. Um, it takes, I think, longer to do that than it does to create the files in the CAD software that I use. Now again, that's, uh, that's knowing that I have several years of experience doing this, so my ability to use that software has improved and it actually continues to improve every day. I learn new tips and tricks for using that software to speed things up. but. As it stands now, I can make those parts much, much faster. And then, of course, when it comes to cutting it on the CNC machine, it is dramatically faster because the time it would take for me to make a neck using traditional techniques could take anywhere from six to eight hours of work. With the CNC machine, it's two hours at tops. And sometimes it's even faster than that. And then what I have once it's finished is I have a neck that is ready for 220 grit sanding. So, um, you know, yes, there's still some handwork that's going to be involved, but it's far less than what was uh, expected when I was using, you know, a spoke shave or rasp files to carve the shape of the neck's contour. So using CNC machine is much faster once you've kind of flattened out that learning curve and have, have, have spent the time necessary to learn how to do it. And that could take some time, but I want to encourage you to stick with it because it will get faster. So if you're thinking about adding CNC to your workshop, or maybe you have recently and you're frustrated with that steep learning curve, 
All I can say is stick with it because as you improve your skills, it's going to get much, much faster and much, much easier because one of the drawbacks to traditional guitar building, especially if you're planning to build, uh, you know, a number of guitars, more than just one or two, traditional guitar building puts a lot of stress on your neck, your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your back. And I can tell you from experience, it can be painful. CNC eliminates that and makes it uh, so much easier. And you know, you're still going to have to do some handwork as you finish the guitar, because as I've said, you have to combine some of the traditional techniques with the CNC, but the CNC is going to take up most of that really hard grunt work that you used to do by hand in the past. And it's going to make it so much easier. And I've heard of folks who have said, yeah, but I like to do uh, handwork because it's a stress release. I find it soothing. Um, yeah, that's, that's all great and everything until you're trying to build five to 10 guitars at a time and you're going to bed at night in so much pain that you wonder if it's all worth it. But with CNC, that, that takes it away and it makes it so much easier. Now, one other thing to consider and this is, this is uh, kind of the interesting factor that is starting to play more of a role as technology changes. CNC is subtractive manufacturing. You're taking a piece of wood and you're carving away. You're subtracting wood and ending up with that final shape, the neck or the body or fretboard or whatever. But there's also additive manufacturing, which is done with 3D printing. And this is a guitar neck that I printed on a 3D printer. Uh, I made the fretboard on my CNC machine, so I'm combining subtractive and additive manufacturing. And I also have, I'm in the process of printing out the parts for the body. It's gonna be in six pieces that will all be glued together. This is all going to be part of a video series that I'm going to be producing probably in a couple of months where I explain how I made a guitar using 3D printed parts. So I encourage you to, to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so that when that series is posted, you'll be uh, aware if that's something that you're interested in. I know that some folks will gasp in horror at the thought of a 3D printed guitar, but hey, Technology marches on. Progress can't be stopped. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I found it somewhat thought provoking and it will offer you some uh, food for thought when it comes to deciding whether or not you want to add CNC technology to your workshop and what you may have to, uh, the problems that you may have to solve and that learning curve that you're going to have to flatten out. But I can promise you once you've done that, if you're even slightly interested in what CNC brings to the table, you will be very happy that you did. And it's well worth the effort to get to that point. So uh, as always though, um, if you've enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up, visit the links in the description below if you'd like to help support the channel financially um, and subscribe, do all that good stuff, share the video all that. And until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for future guitar building videos.